Last month, Congress passed the Paycheck Protection Program, which set aside $342 billion to help small businesses through the pandemic shutdown. Now, before most small businesses could get any help, that money disappeared faster than Rudy Giuliani and direct sunlight. And because of this, Congress has had to come back with a second round of funding with 310 additional billion dollars. But when it came time to hand it out yesterday, things got off to another rocky start. This morning, millions of small businesses are still waiting for relief. As delays, technical glitches, and overwhelming demand caused the Small Business Administration's portal to crash within minutes of relaunching the new loan funding program. The SBA revealing twice as many people tried to access the program on Monday than at any time during the first round of loans. Many lenders reported not being able to file applications for clients because the computer system kept crashing. God damn it, man. How come it seems like every time the government builds a website, it crashes immediately? Like, I've never had this problem with my website, picklesandsocks.com. And don't tell me it's because nobody wants to see photos of pickles wearing socks. It's adorable. I mean, look at that. Look at that. He's not supposed to be wearing that sock because he's a pickle. (laughs) It's so funny. Now, look, computer errors can be fixed. Right? They probably just need to turn it off and turn it back on again. That never works. But there's a bigger problem with the PPP. It turns out that one reason small businesses haven't been able to get their money is because all the big businesses have been snapping it up. We've learned that in round one of the PPP, a whopping $870 million went to publicly traded companies. At least 75 companies that were helped are so big that they're publicly traded and some had market values greater than $100 million. Some of the nation's largest restaurant chains are facing backlash. Shake Shack returning $10 million it received after public outcry. The Los Angeles Lakers organization is the latest not-so-small business to return a government loan. The team received more than $4.5 million in the first round of loans. Lakers are one of the NBA's most profitable franchises, worth more than $4 billion. Yeah. It turns out the companies who are getting a lot of the small business loan money are small in the same way that Joe Exotic is chill. I'll tell you about Carol Baskin. Let me tell you about, and how come I can't say the N word? Even the Los Angeles Lakers got some of that small business money. And I don't care what anybody says. The Lakers do not need $4 million, all right? The Knicks need $4 million to bribe their fans, to act like they don't see what's going on. Now, it is important to remember that although what these big companies did was shitty, it wasn't illegal, right? They saw a chance, a chance to get money, and they took it, which is what companies are always gonna do. Companies don't company, (laughs) y'all. You know how we all say that? No, we don't. My question is, why didn't the government come up with regulations to make sure that the money for small businesses actually went to small businesses? It's like if you put down a bowl of food for a small dog, you have to get the big dog out of the room. Everyone knows that. Right? If you just ask the big dog not to eat the food, the dog's gonna be like, oh yeah, I'll think about it, but I think better when I'm full. So let me just eat some of the food and then I'll let you know. So you see, instead of keeping the big dogs out, the treasury department just left the whole thing up to the banks. And then the banks did what the banks do, which is screw over the little guys. Four major banks are already facing a lawsuit alleging they prioritized bigger customers because those PPP loans yielded bigger fees for the banks. The program allows banks to prioritize existing customers, particularly those with large credit lines, over small businesses or new applicants. Nearly 8,500 of J.P. Morgan's private and commercial bank customers who applied were assisted by what some called a concierge banking service. If you have $25 million and you go to a large bank, the way that they're gonna get your account is with white glove service that your corner shop just is not going to have. And that means that you don't wait on hold. Um, You don't go through a web portal that doesn't work. You call someone up who picks up the phone and scoots you to the front of the line. Yeah, you can't leave the loan decisions up to the banks. You can't let them take government's money and then decide who it goes to. Because unlike a government, a bank is a business. It's always gonna take care of its top customers first. So big companies weren't waiting in line to get loans. They had direct access to the cash. It's the same way Ivanka has direct access to Trump while Eric has to call and set up an appointment. By the way, Eric, they're always busy. They will always be busy. So. 
That's what went wrong with the first round of small business loans. And hopefully, hopefully the Treasury Department's new rules for the second round of money will ensure that the loans go to the companies that actually need it the most. But there's another big aspect to the story that a lot of people are overlooking. Many small businesses in America are owned by women and black people. And you know what many black owned and women owned businesses don't have? Pre-existing relationships with banks. So if the banks didn't know you before coronavirus, you're definitely not gonna be on their radar now. Which is why experts fear that up to 90% of women and minority owned businesses could be shut out of the loan program. Now, I don't know how you fix this program overnight, but if you're a woman or a minority who owns a small business, I suggest you start practicing your jump shot because that might be the only way you get some of this government cash. Well, that's our show for tonight. Before we go, the COVID pandemic has devastated communities around the world. But remember, the International Medical Corps is helping those communities rebuild and recover. And if you are able to, and you would like to help them in their global outreach, please donate whatever you can. And if you'd like to support the response here at home in New York specifically, please donate to the NYC healthcare heroes who are providing care packages to our healthcare workers, hospitals, and temporary medical facilities. Until tomorrow, stay safe out there, wash your hands, and don't forget, lotion can also be used to moisturize the rest of your body.